this issue is the Liberal Party. Well, um, you, you claimed last week, and you touched on it just then, that the referendum on the euro would become actually a referendum on Europe itself. Obviously, never. Is that the logic of that is that if people vote in favour, you a stay in Europe and go into the euro. If they vote against, you st go, you leave the euro. You also leave Europe. I think de facto that if you had a referendum on the euro and you voted yes, the country votes yes, then obviously that commits your future to being within Europe. If you vote no, then I dare say in a very British way, and probably a very European way, you can muddle through. But the truth of the matter is you have begun the process of disengagement by not being at the top table. OK, I'll bring in the audience on Europe. Everyone wants to come in. Yeah. Um, the woman down here who's on fourth in from the edge with the glasses and the light grey top, front row. Yes, the, hello. The, the, hello. The, the subject of Europe is, is obviously a, a, a very s a se a sensitive one, but we have no problems with tran uh, trading in Europe because we have people, if people want to buy and the goods and services are right, they will buy whether we have the euro, whether we're in Europe or not. Mm. And we get too much uh, interruptions from Europe and interference from Europe because what is happening at the moment is we have to release child killers because Europe say we do. We have to pay compensation to killers of... Um, of troops and police in Northern Ireland because Europe say we do. How long is it going to be before we're actually having to pay compensation? And of course you want more of all this. You, want fewer, you, you, Mr. Kennedy, want more of all that. You want fewer vetoes, more majority of vote. You were passionate in favour of the written constitution, yeah. defence, common security. Um, you, want, you want to go right down the route that she doesn't care for. Well, first of all, can I just say in a point of fact that of course it's not the European Union that decides the judicial cases that have led, for example, to the Bloody Sunday uh, issue that you were referring to, I think. And indeed, this, amongst the senior judges sitting on the panel who make that decision are very senior British judges because we are part of the nominating process for people who make it. So we're involved in that decision, the Brits just like the other Europeans. But then the key point, the central point you're making, we've got a choice as a country, it strikes me. We can be a member of a club, and I can't think of any club, far less a political party, and I happen to lead one, of, with which I am every day of the week entirely happy. But I do accept that if I want to influence it, I've probably got to join it and work from within. If I don't do that, I can't influence it at all. The man who's second in in the third row back with the blonde hair. Yeah. EU um, tax harmonisation, are you in favour it or no. against it? And if you're against mm. it, how do you reconcile that with your desire to um, give away the pound? Surely the two go hand in hand and you no, can't have no, one I without I, the other. I don't accept for a moment they do and I think the Conservatives have been completely caught out today with this uh, scare tactics that they came out with. We have said as a party, we've said repeatedly, that you retain a national veto when it comes to taxation measures. The Europe has two levels of tax that it has control over. One is VAT and one is customs and excise issues. But it can only proceed with unanimous voting. And as long as you've got a veto, if you don't agree, there won't be a unanimous vote, so it can't proceed. So the issue doesn't arise. I'd happy with that? No, I'm not happy with that. I think that um, basically you need central taxation if you have a single currency okay, in order you. to make fiscal transfers. Yes. The man, the man down here right, beside, right behind you. Sure. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to say oh, I, I am gagging for Europe, but uh, second there, yeah. um, I'd just like to say that if you were to achieve government, which would be you know, obviously great for you, but... Do you think it's really wise to put the, uh, the issue of such an important thing as a single currency to vote the people when you and government would be the best position to make that choice? I mean, it's a very important decision, isn't it? And I don't think that uh, even why I leave, would okay, be... Why leave it to the people well, I when you know best? Well, I generally... I don't know if I know best, but the, at least I can honestly tell people what I think. Um, and a general election is a very complicated choice. You're voting for everything from a local personality candidate due to a national political party, you're concerned about abortion policy, drugs, Europe, policing, law and order, and somehow you've got to boil all this down to put an X in a piece of paper, as that sign down there says. So that's difficult too. I think you've got to trust people's intelligence to come to the general centre of gravity decision that they want, and I'm quite sure that will be for Europe. The woman wearing the blue top and the glasses, second row. Thank you. I am quite appalled that the leader of one of our, our parties has so little either knowledge or so much contempt for small businesses that you want to do away with sterling and have us use the euro. Mm. Have you the faintest idea the effect it will have on small businesses, the cost to them, and the number of them who will go out of business because of it? Are you in, are you in small business yourself? Yes. 
Charles Candy? I'm afraid I don't accept that analysis, and I've got every sympathy and understanding for small businesses coming from a part of the world and indeed family links that are driven through and through over generations with small business activity. What is a small business? A small business is the kind of business that, whether it's the family shop, whether it's the enterprise that is providing service sector uh, support in a given community. We all know what a small business is. And that kind of small business will benefit <laughs> from the greater stability that a stable exchange rate and a strong euro will bring to this country as it will to the rest of Europe. The man who's on the edge in the second row with the check jacket. You want to be honest about uh, Europe. Would you like to be honest to us now and say that you intend getting rid of the pound and that you want to forward, go forward to a federation in Europe? No, I can't say that. I can't do anything in Europe unless the British public vote for a single European so currency views, in then. a referendum. You now, when that referendum comes round, one would assume the government of the day would only hold a referendum if it was wanting to recommend but a change. If you and became, that change if you became would be Prime Minister, disturbing. would you not say that you would be actively trying to ditch the pound and actively <laughs> trying to promote the Federation in Europe? No, I would be act actively trying to promote the long-term patriotic economic benefits of my well, country. Well, hang on. Your position has been that you'd be quite happy with a referendum in principle before any economic tests have been met, and after you'd got that approval, you would then work actively to bring about the conditions, for yeah. instance, by devaluing the pound until it was no, as well, weak as the euro, in order to get in. No, well, two, two points there. The case for doing <coughs> that sequence, principle, and then at a later stage of conditions were met, the House of Commons, that moment has passed because that's what could have been yeah, done. That's your outlook. In the that's your mental outlook, no, which is what he's referring the to. The moment has passed. If that was going to happen, Tony Blair should, could or should have done that in the first two years of this parliament, but he chose not to. So we will only have a referendum now beyond this election in a future parliament if the government of the day thinks the economic conditions have been met. You're not and sounding very honest though, you're sounding slippery. I'm not slippery at all, sir. I'm not slippery okay, at I'll all. Bring in, I'll bring in one more person yeah. here. The woman in red, the, the red shirt and the black suit. Yeah, I think that if we had a referendum that British would just vote against the pound because, I mean, for, for the pound because we've got an ageing population, we're so opposed to change, but I'm, I'm for Europe. Well, I, I remember, you know, when decimalisation came in, uh, and I remember my grandparents at the time shaking their heads and saying that this marked the end of civilization as we know it. Now, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But I don't think anybody today would seriously argue that we go back to a system of internal currency, which is pounds, shillings and pence, would they? OK, thank you. Uh, one more man down here with the glasses. Uh, Mr. Kennedy, you, you, you have 46 seats, I believe you said, in Parliament. Thanks it, to Romsey, 47. <coughs> 47. Uh, 47, I beg your pardon. It does look rather unlikely that you're going to form the next government. Okay, I've, whatever, I've said so. And whatever your good intentions, if you were to do that, and you were to be involved in scrapping the pound and introducing the euro, you would no longer be the government because you would be governed by the European Union. Okay, no. yeah. you'll be governed by the European Union. <laughs> you, wouldn't, um, you wouldn't be governed by the European Union, sir, any more than after the last war when this country of ours signed up for membership of NATO and committed itself that if the Russians, the Soviets, ever attacked Canada, we were willing to risk our obliteration as a people. That's what we've been prepared to compromise on in shared sovereignty for a greater Charles, good. Charles, and that's time what for Europe represents. Just one more question. You, yes, you, 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 you touched on the fact that you're unlikely to be Prime Minister. Um, you say you are a real opposition, but mm. you don't actually rule out taking a post if there is a Labour government in that government. Doesn't that expose you properly to the charge that you're really Labour's lapdog? No, we're not Labour's lapdog, <laughs> and I can tell you why. The reason that we're not Labour's lapdog in the period, 18 months or so, that I've been leader of this party, we've conducted ourselves as an independent opposition campaigning political party. We're coming forward with the most coherent and credible critique to this government compared with what the Tories are offering in this election. Well, why and that's you... why our ratings are going up and William Hague and the Conservative ratings are stuck and going down. You're at 17% in one of the polls. Are you saying that You're if up. it was below 17% you would have failed in the election as shared uh, vote? Oh, I've said quite clearly from day one. I hope that we will deliver a bigger percentage share of the vote, and I think we're on target to do that, and more Liberal Democrat MPs in the next House And we've got five seconds only. When you say, no, I won't take a seat in government full stop, 
I want to take a seat in government, and I want that seat to be as part of a Liberal Democrat government. Not quite the answer to the question, but thank you very much, and thank you to everyone here. Thank Next you. Next Wednesday, after the news at 10, we'll be in Newcastle with the leader of the Conservative Party, William Hague. But before that, on Sunday morning at 11.30 in London, we'll be with the key players to tackle two of the most controversial issues of this campaign. That's crime and asylum. If you'd like to join our audience for either of these programmes, then please ring this number. It's 020-7261-3784. Once more, 020-3721-3784. For now, from Southampton, good night. Movie drama based on a true story next tonight, Sissy SpaceX stars in A Private Matter.